Hi, it's Eliana. So recently I was asked, who am I? What have been my life experiences? And if I could distill who I am in a brief description, I've been an experiencer since I was two years old. I remembered meeting Pleiadians, Andromedans, Arcturians since the age of two, telling my grandmother stories of seeing the, the beautiful beings on the starships, seeing the beings with the blue skin and the blonde hair, the Pleiadians, humanoid looking ones, seeing Uf UFOs, seeing crafts, starships, light, light ships when I was four years old, walking with my grandfather out in the woods and going to our little dacha house in Ukraine and seeing this gyroscope white silver UFO, huge UFO in the sky as I'm walking along with grandpa seeing a UFO in the park with grandma, more like a circular craft, what you call a saucer, also silver, white. The gyroscope one was elongated. This one was a smaller saucer. Then as I got older, in my mid-twenties remembering that I was abducted by reptilians, the Black Drazo and Shrub Invictus reptilians being taken into underground bases, dumps near Rostov and being experimented on with my immune system and my blood with these tall black reptilians and yellow-green ones and seeing this type of a harvester race being who is 14 feet tall with pale gray skin. The reptilians were like 14 to 16 feet tall being taken through a black type of a portal by the black drowser reptilian soldier into the underground base where there was human personnel and then the experiments on the kids and teenagers changing their blood, weakening immune system, stuff like that, putting nanotechnology inside them to track them. Then when I was about 29, remembering secret space programs, working on planetary corporations and the cybernetic slabs with holographic technology, regenerative medicine, holographic medical pods, that can heal diseases. They work on plasma and crystalline technologies, creating the biological drug serums to heal immune system issues and to adjust the biological system to being on Mars and the moon. That's planetary corporations in the cybernetics labs, creating smart suits, bio human biological cyborgs with augmented strength, intelligence, speed, agility, Neuralink implants that allow that go into the brain by dermal injection through the neck or the ear and piloting ships remotely, bio ships with these Neuralink implants telepathically communicating with other SSP assets going on lunar space operations before the quantum leap time travel program before the 60 and back being on lunar space operations learning for t for two years learning about different types of extraterrestrials what their capabilities are what it's like to live out in space you get trained on the moon to be ready for something like a 60 and back you do a two year or something like that then you get transferred to other places like Mars. Mars does have biodomes, electromagnetic domes that protect the bases, the colonies, 
They have holographic shielding that cloaks the actual bases and the colonies and the structures there. It's colonized and they are doing some forms of terraform terraformation of the planet. They've built out some forests. They've tried doing forest preserves with huge trees and mushrooms and the dirt on Mars makes, makes everything grow bigger. Piloting different types of frigate ships and piloting various tomahawk gandry ships that can go beyond the speed of light. Various dark fleet, Nachtwaffen, memories of being trained to be an assassin, a female assassin with different laser phaser, plasma weapons, retrieving people who escaped from the programs, seeing barred ships, secret, basically prison ships that are cloaked and move around with various types of prisoners and torture, time corporations, which is supposed to be like the time police to police the other SSP factions or groups to make sure they don't illegally or unlawfully use time travel technologies like portal stations, stargates and portals, transportation stations that have crystalline tech on it that can transport you from one planet to another and streamline your timeline so it doesn't look like you had missing time and it doesn't look like you've been missing the mind wipe technology memory ingram stations on planetary corp mars basis that can erase your memories swap out your memories change your memories mind wipe technology those are the type of memories that i have with the planetary corporations lunar space operations also the Shadow Guard program that tries to break people apart, tries to break your mind, your body with torture, then build you back up from top to bottom or bottom to top, implants you with different implants, Neuralink implants, Shadow Guard. Shadow Guard also has that, not just planetary corporations on Mars and the Moon. Then meeting different extraterrestrials the Arcturians teaching me healing, how to work with the golden ray frequency, the blue ray frequency, how to see different implants and diseases in the body, inflammation. If something has blockages, then it could be green color, orange, yellow. If there's healthy tissue and healthy organs, it's going to be blue in frequency. So they taught me energetic healing and just these beautiful Arcturians on blue Arcturians, purple Arcturians, nine feet tall, just floating on the mothership because they don't just walk, they float. They're in a higher density than us, meeting the Pleiadians, Andromedans, teaching me soul wisdom, teaching me how to see the future meeting the L race, the 12th dimensional beings that can surpass time, they time travel, showing me elements of the future, my present, teaching me how to balance and ground myself, teaching me what is part of true ascension, the inner workings of the soul, the mind and the body, the inner work and the outer work, how to balance yourself, how to raise your frequencies and energies. They taught me that kind of stuff. They taught me how to balance energy and they can go beyond time and space. They can manifest being in pure light bodies or being in physicality. They can create bio ships, organic ships with crystalline technology on it. They can change shape, frequency form, because they've transcended beyond linear time space.
So they're beyond time and space. They exist in a pure energy frequency. And just learning who I am as a soul being, as a star traveler, traveling the universe, traveling to different planets, having some human incarnations in Egypt, as Calypso, the architect and the priest who designed the Egyptian Atlantean Hall of Records under the Sphinx 100,000 years ago, then built the pyramids, the Giza Plateau pyramids. He hid a lot of different technologies, staffs of power, crystalline staffs, crystalline technology, the ruby refractory telescopes that can decloak holographic technology on other planets and show you what's there. I've had lifetimes as mermaids and a geneticist in Atlantis in the various epochs of Atlantis going back two million years ago. I've also had experiences being abducted working in Area 51 in the S1 facility deep underground in the in the bioengineering lab where I was working with different genomes and DNA sequencing for creating human ET hybrids with various types of extraterrestrial DNA being mixed with humanoid DNA to grow human ET human ET cloned bodies and partially with gray DNA and other types of extraterrestrial DNA, then those cloned bodies being grown in regeneration tanks filled with plasma fluid to maturate the bodies, then have them transferred into various UFO crafts and taken to be trained to be part of human society. So that's what I saw in S1 by bioengineering lab. It has also these types of lights that do mind wipes so you don't remember what you worked on. And they have teleportation platforms with time dilation technology. There's the quantum leap time stream dilation technology that can transport you to different locations. Also the TR type crafts that do that. They have teleportation pads as well. Planetary Corp, Area 51. They do also experiments with time travel and wormholes, black holes, white holes in Area 51 in those underground bases with CERN technologies. Then I was stationed in Antarctica after the SSP experiences were completed completed the 16 back and I was released from that service work I was put in Antarctica to study the Atlantean ancient outposts the crystalline technologies the Neuralink chairs the various crystalline holographic databases and technologies they have in those crystalline outposts in Antarctica I was to catalog all that technology and the languages, the cryostasis pods, there was blue beings inside them. I never opened the pods, I never touched the beings, but they had the ancient Atlantean um, Syrian scripts running with these weird looking glyphs that looked Egyptian and somewhat Sumerian on the carvings of the Neuralink chairs and this technology looked like it was either crystalline rock form or metallic and they have different technologies. There's also the crystalline swords, the staffs that are there and all kinds of different holographic libraries and interfaces with planetary histories. Uh, I had also gone to Venus and I had seen the different ancient, the different ancient builder race technologies with Anea, who is the descendant of the L race. She had taken me to Venus 
I've seen the Atlantic Arc ship and the Venusian Arc ship with the various histories of the planetary systems, how our universe formed, what took place in this universe. Those are my other various experiences that I've had. What stands out the most vividly to me is the reptilian abductions by the Black Drazos and the Shrub Invictus reptilians because that happened from the age of 2 to 10. So seeing the reptilians in the underground dumbs base under Rostov and what then used to be still Russia, human personnel were just doing whatever work they were doing in the dumb space and the reptilians were utilizing the base for their experiments. Seeing children in cages, children shackled, mal malnourished, almost without clothing. That's what re some reptilians did to children back then in these dumb spaces. That's what I remember from my abduction very vividly. Plus, also the advanced technology of the Neuralink implants and how a group of Nordics was working on planetary corporations' bases on Mars. These guys are tall, almost seven feet tall, blonde hair, some have brown, light brown hair, green blue eyes, also sort of amber colored eyes. They had designed the Neuralink implants with different types of symbols and energy frequency connected to it. So it's etheric implants with some nanotechnology, na nanofiber gold, that has energy cores. And when it's dermally injected in the neck or in the ear, it goes to your brain. The nanofiber gold fibers connect with your neurons and axons and the implants, the etheric implants with the energetic cores open up in the brain and activate. Then you have a neuronal brain system in your brain that amplifies your telepathic and psychic abilities and gives you the ability to communicate with human SSP assets who also have the neural link implants and extraterrestrials to just telepathically communicate with them. They might not even have implants, but you can communicate with them telepathically through a synthetic telepathy system through these implants. These implants were internally active, but they didn't have any external AI systems connected, connected to them. They were what's called a closed circuit type of implant system that does not connect to sentient or active AI that could potentially influence these implants. So that was a closed system and planetary corporations did not want to work with sentient AI that could potentially hack the basis if it got, if it got out of control. So they were, they were very careful not to use active or sentient AI, just using holographic technology to run the bases and the space stations. So this implant technology is 300 years more advanced what humans have on Earth. The, the Nordics were working with the human personnel on planetary core basis and in the cybernetics labs to create these Neuralink, Neuralink implants. That tech came from the Nordics, not the humans, but it was connected in the human run US and other type other countries in planetary corporations, all interconnected on the Mars basis and the cybernetics labs. So some extraterrestrials, humanoid extraterrestrials do work with the human run secret space program factions and groups and there's also extraterrestrial space programs not connected with any of the human SSP factions or groups. Space is a vast system of different infrastructures 
solar systems, galaxies, even universes, where there's different types of programs being run by humans and extraterrestrials outside of what we're told is normal on Earth. We don't even know the half of it of what's going on in these secret space programs or Earth-run programs with cloning, with reverse engineering of crafts from different crash sites of extraterrestrial crafts starting from the 1920s, 30s, 40s, Roswell, New Mexico, studying extraterrestrials, studying their biologies, molecular science of how their bodies work, how their abilities work, creating super soldiers. There's programs on Earth that do that. In Antarctica, Area 51, they've played around with time travel, wormholes, portals, advanced spaceships run on anti-gravity technology, electromagnetic propulsion systems, crystalline technologies. It's all being integrated in secret programs that we know nothing about. That's been happening for 80, 70, or even 100 years in the grander scope of things in this reality. The SSP assets that were the cybernetics technicians, they would, every day they went in to work at the Mars basis in the cybernetics labs, they would come near a scanning platform that would scan their whole body, their genes, genomics, DNA, fingerprint, eyes, eye scan, fingerprints, the whole body to check to make sure that they didn't have any other implants except planetary corp ones and that they weren't infiltrated by anything like they weren't shapeshifters that were extraterrestrials. They weren't biological human cyborgs who had had a soul transference from the original human body into another organic cybernetic body to make sure you were who you were, that your soul was yours, that would all show up in the scan, that you had not been infiltrated by another SSP faction and you weren't being mind controlled by any other beings or entities, not telepathically or physically, and that you didn't have any AI viruses or any other soul type virus frequencies from other beings invading you. So that scanning platform that you would stand on would check for all of that to make sure you were not compromised and it was safe for you to work in the cybernetics labs that day, that there wasn't anyone or anything infiltrating the planetary corp system on the Mars bases and in the cybernetics labs. That's another thing that I remember every day walking into those cybernetics labs being on that platform, being scanned, and having a genome scanner, a portable one, that I would carry so that I could scan other human genetics and extraterrestrials, scan them and heal whatever genetic issues or physical illnesses, diseases they have, along with the holographic medical pods that, that run on plasma and crystalline frequency to heal the whole body and the mind, to heal you of any disease, replicate organs, remove burns, remove physical pain, trauma, mental health issues. That, would, that could be cured with the holographic medical pods connected to the holographic and regenerative technology in the cybernetics labs because planetary corporations creates and builds and manufactures the holographic medical pods. It's their systems created on Mars and in some portion on the moon in their medical systems now. Lunar Space Operations has several facilities making holographic medical pods now. Now these days in, in the here and the now current time frame Parts of the things that I remember about the memory engram stations is that they can access your past lives 
as whoever you were, extraterrestrials or humans. And in my case, the, the system was looking for information about crystalline technology from my Atlantean past lives and genetic information, what I know about genetics when I was a geneticist in Atlantis, because they wanted to extract the information about how to build crystalline starships and crystalline engines for creating vessels going beyond the speed of light. That's what they were looking for in my memories as the Andromedan Pleiadian beings that I had been and Atlantean past lifetimes because I had worked with healing crystalline technology, spaceship technology, and also genetics and DNA modification as a geneticist in Atlantis. So they wanted access to those memories to create similar technology for planetary corporations on the Mars basis. That's why I was led in into this SSP program. For the most part, that's why they wanted me in the program to get to those memories and to also have me as support staff working in the cybernetics labs because I had medical knowledge as a geneticist from my Atlantean lifetime with different extraterrestrial and human genetics and how genetic modification works, how to splice, how to splice the human DNA with extraterrestrial DNA and even create new types of beings, hybrids or full beings. The genetics aspect of that can do it if you know what you're doing with genetics and how to mix different genomes together to create beings that are stable and their genomes are not going to break apart. That's another aspect of information that they wanted from my, from my past life memories as different galactic beings and who I had been in Atlantis two million years ago. When I had been in Antarctica, the Atlantean slash Syrian Neuralink chairs, when you connect to that technology, crystalline metallic technology with thought consciousness, it activates a path to your consciousness and it can allow you to see things from the past, the present, or even the future. So it acts almost like a chronovisor technology, allowing you to connect to past aspects of history and look what happened in the past or even the near present or future because it's crystalline technology. So you can do that and almost you, with the consciousness, then you activate physical portal systems with the crystalline aspect of the Neuralink chairs, of the crystalline Neuralink chair, and you can go in portal to a different place on Earth, on Earth and other planets. So these crystalline Neuralink chairs allow you to also portal to different places in its portal technology. As well, the various crystalline disks or crystals that were in the history libraries in the Atlantean outposts or sphere eggs, because there's crystalline energy sphere eggs that hover when you touch them. They have different histories of planetary systems, galaxies, universes, how all creation is created. There's history on that in those technologies in the various Atlantean outposts, as well as shipbuilding facilities where the Atlantean arc ships had been built. All of that technology, the outposts, the shipbuilding facilities, and some of the arc ships are still in Antarctica. Some of it is under the ice 
There's portal systems, ancient ones, still in, a, in Antarctica. There's also an Atlantean pyramid in Alaska. All that ancient technology is still there and it's not damaged. It's semi-active. That's why I had been sent to Antarctica. That is why I had been sent to Antarctica to investigate all of that advanced technology and, and its capabilities because the planetary corporations, they wanted to understand how it works and for all of it to be cataloged uh, and how many outposts of the Atlantean buildings and shipbuilding facilities are in Antarctica to this day, to this very day in this technology. So this is in essence what my life experiences have been and who I am, a being of the stars, a being from the stars, a being from the universe, having a connection with everything living in the universe and source creator, prime creator, connecting to everything that is in the universe to get true information, a reality beyond 3D. That is another connection that I have, and that is who I am. That is kind of like my life story and experiences. And talking about that in encompassing the scope of, of my reality, of human life and beyond, physically and energetically, this is who I am. This is sort of my life story and my experiences. I was recently asked, how do you describe your life experiences in a chronological timeline in order? I just went from what my experiences were from the age of two to current present timeline, what I experienced. And I always chronicled my experiences. Any experience that it was that was significant, I would just write it down. I would write a log file of these experiences and I would save it to look back on later. And that helped me to write a book about my life experiences in the secret space programs, meeting the extraterrestrials, um, the star traveler stuff, the past lifetimes. It just helped me to capture a moment of everything that I am in time and beyond time. And I was asked, does your experiences have to be short or long when you're describing this in a book or verbally, like how long should it be? It really depends on you and your experiences. I was able to distill everything that I wanted to talk about the ET stuff, the abductions, the SSP experiences in a book that's 174 pages. Just all the things that I think are important and really describe who I am and all my experiences. It, it did not have to be anything long or anything short. It, it's just what my experiences are. Every person is different and every person will have their own stories and they can describe it in whatever detail they want, what they feel they can share or want to share. It's really up to you in how much you want to describe or write about. It's your life. It's your beautiful experiences, even stuff that's not so beautiful if you want to share it and show your process of, of what you experienced, you're allowed to. You are allowed to express yourself and, and be your honest self to whatever degree you want or feel comfortable disclosing. It's really up to you and what you want to share 
with the world and how you express yourself in your creativity, in your writing, in your verbal descriptions. It's really your, your history, your words of power, your frequency of life that you're exploring. And if you want to share parts of that with others so they can learn what exists out there in the universe, it's the most beautiful experience out there that we can share and explore. What I've learned about myself is that when I'm writing a book about my experiences, I usually do descriptive writing, what the beings look like, the races, the places, the planets, the technology. It's all put in creative writing, in that creative writing that is very descriptive of exactly what something looks like, the color, the vibration, the frequency, who is in the scene, what the time period is, what the planets are, the galaxies, the names of the beings. I put that in into the descriptive format within a book. I also include visual images of the likeness rep representation for everything that I talk about because I see things from a visual perspective from the holographic universe. So I will always include a visual detailed image likeness of whatever was in my experience in these books. Same for other book formats because I do research books as well that's connected to my experiences. I do healing books. I do educational teaching books as well. History, galactic history books with all the beings and the histories of the galaxy's creation of the universe. So visual expression is part of my creative way of sort of giving everybody an idea of what everything in my universe, in the world, of what I experience looks like along, along with that written descriptive. So you guys see everything and experience everything that I've experienced through the descriptive writing and the visual representations of what the world looks like, of where I have been and what I have experienced in very clear detail. And others can express themselves that way as well or in different ways if they want. Your creativity, your imagination, your ability to show the world what you want to show and express and emote could be very different than what I do, whichever creative way you choose to include your experiential information is up to you. There's no limit and creativity can show itself in many different formats and ways in how you verbally express yourself in written form and in visual form, how you create artwork, how you create images to represent what, what is very meaningful to you and what is profound to you in your own experiences, those beautiful experiences that you've had and want to share that you treasure profoundly and express. So thank you so much and namaste.